and we are trying to reset it? Or where do we start? And you know, because of my position, that I'm now allegedly the planner of the protest. So what I'm going to do, say, or do is outside the context of that plan. Because I'm talking about leadership. All of, all of you today will agree that there's nothing wrong with Nigeria. I'll be most There's nothing wrong with our beautiful country. We have the best of air. We have the best of land. God bless us with everything that is required of any nation to be great. God bless us with the human capital to be great. Natural resources. Everything that can make a country thrive and be great is available in Nigeria. The only thing that is missing in leadership to organize those resources. To organize those resources. That is the only thing that is missing. That's why I always agree with Chinua Achebe, who said there's nothing wrong with Nigeria in his there was a country. When he, and I quote, said, there's nothing wrong with the environment in Nigeria, nothing wrong with the air, nothing wrong with the air or the water in Nigeria. The only thing that is wrong is the leadership, the inability of the leadership to rise up to the occasion. That is the only thing that is wrong. Today, Nigeria has become a country of bad reference in everything we do. Among that, we did and showed you where Nigeria was in 2014 and where Nigeria is today in terms of just growth. When we started this political period in 1989, sorry, 1998, Nigeria was going at less than 30 percent from 2000 until 2014 nigeria was uh, growing at above six percent in fact nigeria was among the four countries of the world that are, are above five percent we are comparable to china to all the countries that are doing well yet not every on on to 2015 by 2014, we have moved where we can compare that our, our only measure of progress is our per capita income. And by 2014, we are at 3,200 per capita, being almost 50% in housing as far back as 2000 today. Nigeria is the home for the highest number of homeless people in the world. We are uh, year 2000, our poverty and those living under poverty or multidimensional poverty are below 100 million. Today we are over 130 million. Every measure and indices of development. Nigeria is headed south. And this has worsened in the past nine years. And of course, everybody can see what is happening in the past one year. Which is why, like I said, it is something that you have to look at reference yourself. That a country within one year, when in 2015 we had a new government. Our debt as a country is less than 30 trillion. Today, our debt as a country is about 120 trillion. And the law of Nigeria said, if you must borrow, you must tell them what you're going to use the money you're going to borrow. People must know. But nobody here, because I'm talking to the best people, most three people are caring people, but I'm sure none of you know what we use 90 trillion for. All we are being told in the story and everything, our unemployment has worsened. 
as after school children have worsened, our health care has worsened. A country like, like Nigeria today have more people when it comes to infant mortality, we have overtaken India. That is seven times our population. Just like we are more than them when it comes to the issue of poverty. There are seven times our population. In all this, which you know more, I do not need to start boring with you. In all this, what is missing, what is the cause of this is cumulative effect of leadership failure over the years. Not having a leadership that you can call ethical leaders, all of us politicians, not being able to have the conscience because for you to have talk about leadership, you must talk about competence, capacity, compassion, which is today lacking. It is when you have this three that you can talk about a leader being visionary and transportive because you have to have have the competence to know what his job is all about and what he's supposed to do to be able to be visionary and be transformative about leadership. It is this that is lacking that is causing us all the problems that you see today in our system where we are accumulating debts that is unpaid and that will not be paid by the in several years to come. All the bonds we are issuing today will be paid from 24th when most of us here are gone. And that's what we are accumulating for our children. No parents accumulate bad things for the children except in Nigeria. And these are things that can be dealt by doing the right things. I just said the former governor, district governor of this uh, district, former governor from Cross River State. And I remember coming today, everybody knows that if you go around in Nigeria, there's criminality everywhere. People don't talk about what is happening in the north now because they're even afraid. You don't even know where the criminals are coming from. Our farmland, the biggest negative impact in our exception today is food. Nigeria can feed itself. Nigeria has the highest uncultivated land of any nation of its size in the world today. And it can feed itself. And I've always said it before, that Nigeria can feed itself. India was at stage where we are in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. People were supporting India to feed themselves. Today, India is the second biggest producer of rice in the world, even exporting some. India, compared to Nigeria, is 1.4 billion people living on about 3 million square kilometers of land. So you could see how big they are and the land space, yet they can produce their food. We, as Nigeria, everybody knows what our size is. 900,000 plus, and we're just about 200 million. So compared with the size of India, we have more land space for agriculture. Yet, Nigeria today is a nation of grain from Ukraine. Ukraine is at war, and they're giving Nigeria grain because of hunger. When Ukraine went to war, countries of the war were complaining of hunger. And what it will cost them, Nigeria was included. When in the northern Nigeria, as one section of Nigeria, is 700 and something square kilometers, over 700,000 square kilometers of land, Ukraine is just 600. So northern Nigeria, in terms of land space, is more than Ukraine. Job. Things that you need to do as you are being installed today, you and your team, this reset will start from you being voter. Will start from you being the right thing. This is time to stop staying on the sideline. This is not time for anybody to keep quiet. This is not time for you to even be honoring politicians. I thank you for honoring my brother. He was a good man. My other brother was a good man. But let me tell you, 
No Nigerian politician, including me, should be honored today. And it's time to remove all these titles of excellence and everything until things start working. Because it's not working. We can't be stealing money and answering his excellency. Nobody is excellent in stealing. We need to fix the country. The country now needs to be fixed. So you have a job. And that job is to ask fundamental questions. We said people will borrow money. That's what our law says. If you must borrow money, you must say what you're using it to do. That is why people like me are preaching that we must return to, if not the full parliamentary system, we must do what is happening in South Africa. So that we have proper time to question whoever is the president. He doesn't have to hire parents and talks to be talking for him. He needs to talk to the people. The people need to listen to him. Because we elected him. We didn't elect those people to speak to anybody. We want the man we elected to speak to us. Because that's the person that was elected. So we must change and have a proper parliamentary system where the president should be able to be questioned by the people. If he goes to borrow money, we will know what the money is being borrowed for. If he's going to sign any agreement, we know that the agreement is not signing. Now when he finishes signing it, and all of us are wondering what was signed. So we need to have a president. We need to know how much oil we produce in this country. Who is producing it? Who is selling it? All this story, whether somebody has a refinery outside or inside, is not a story for us. The people we elected must tell us who has the refinery inside, why the refinery is not working, and who has the refinery outside. All these stories we are hearing today, this is happening and everything, they must secure us. If we are at war, let's declare war. And everybody knows we are at war. There's nothing wrong with us. We know that we are at war. We can have a country where non state actors and criminals are taking over and nobody is doing anything except every day we say we are going to borrow new money for this project. We are borrowing money for this. We are borrowing. No. We now want to face. So, all I'm appealing to you and your team, appealing to all of you today is please, this country is going to. Not just a difficult time, it is today, in terms of insecure, we are one of the worst countries to live. In terms of poverty and suffering, we are one of the worst countries. In terms of misery, we are one of the worst countries to live. In terms of hungry, we are one of the hungriest countries of the world. So everything is at its top. And it becomes imperative that all of us, when we talk about leadership research, it starts from everybody here. All of us now have to sit down and say, who are we? Election, who are we supporting? How do we hold them responsible? We need to care leaders that should be responsible to the society and be able to be answerable to the society. That is what it is. We need a leadership that is visionary. When the thing has rioted, the president listened. He went back and cut down, removed from the whole budget everything that concerns first lady and second lady. Here, they have passed from first ladies to children, and nobody's caring. We cannot continue that. 